All right, let's get started, guys. Um, today we're going to talk about centroids and orthocenters of triangles. So two more, two more points of concurrency that we have inside of triangles. Before we start, let's remember, because we're going, we're going to use this word a lot today. What did we say when we're talking about points of concurrency? Points are concurrent. What does, what, what does that mean? They all meet at one point. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the median, the medians of a triangle. So let's, let's figure out what we mean by median. Does anybody remember in, if we're talking about statistics? So one way of, of looking, you have the mean, median, and mode. Anybody remember what the median means? Middle. Right in the middle. Median is kind of the same thing with a triangle. Median goes from the midpoint of a side, so the middle of a side, to the opposite vertex. So the median, middle, uh, you can think of it that way. So let me draw a picture of what a, if we had a median, one median drawn in a triangle. So there's my triangle. And I'm going to go from the vertex to the middle of the opposite side. And that's congruent to that. And that is a median. Alright, so looking at our picture, how do we tell the difference between the median and the perpendicular bisector? Because doesn't the perpendicular bisector cut this segment in half? So bisect means? So why isn't this a perpendicular bisector? What other special word is in the description of perpendicular bisector? Oh, it doesn't make a perpendicular. Uh, yeah. So it has to be 90 degree angle. Perpendicular means 90 degree angle. So the perpendicular bisector goes from the middle at a 90 degree angle. So we're starting to get to the place where we have to be, pay very close attention to all the information that we have about the, about the segment. This is a median because it's not perpendicular to the side. And the perpendicular bisector doesn't necessarily go to a vertex. All right, so there's our median. We have a special point that we get with the medians. So the medians of a triangle are concurrent. At a point called the centroid. And one thing, the one thing that's special about a centroid is the centroid is two thirds of the distance from the vertex to the opposite side. And we'll talk about what that means in just a second. All right, so let's draw a picture 
of a triangle with our centroids um, concurrent at, or our, our medians concurrent at our centroid. And I'm going to draw each one in a different color. So here's my blue median. And those are congruent. Let me draw a red median here. And those are going to be congruent. Vertex to the middle of the opposite side. And let me draw a green median. And these are congruent. And I'll call point P. P is a centroid. All right, let's talk about this two-thirds two -thirds distance business. So let's label the triangle, uh, label some points, A, B, C, D, E, and F. What this tells me, the centroid is two-thirds the distance from the vertex to the opposite side. So this would tell me that CP, the centroid, is two-thirds of this total length of the blue centroid. And on the red one, that would tell me that AP is two-thirds of the distance from the vertex to the opposite side, so the entire length of the median. And then finally, uh, uh, which one are we left with? Uh, EP. This distance from E to P is two-thirds of that entire green medium. So that's one thing that is special about, about the centroid. So it's two-thirds of the way across the triangle. Another thing that's special about the centroid is if I trace this triangle out in cardboard and I found the centroid right there at point P, I could put that triangle right on the centroid, right at the tip of my pen, and that's right at where the triangle would balance perfectly. So the other, word, the other words that we use for centroid is, we call it the center of gravity or the center of mass. So the centroid of a triangle is its center of, center of gravity right where that it would balance right on that point. If we constructed it perfectly, the triangle would balance right on the tip of my pen on the center. All right, questions there? All right, let's take a look at an example using using the center and work out how we would deal with this two-thirds two -thirds idea. So here's my picture. I want a green triangle. I want a dark one. There we go. Oh, and I forgot to say one thing, one thing back there you might want to add. The centroid is always inside the triangle. So remember we talked about the circumcenter. The circumcenter can be in, on, or outside the triangle. The incenter is always inside, and the centroid is always inside. All right, so let me draw a picture here. All right, so before we even get the problem set up, what kind of segment is that? Medium. This is a medium from the vertex to the middle of the opposite side. How about that one? That I just drew. What kind of segment is that? Another median. So this gives us a clue that our problem is going to involve.
the centroid. So since all three of those are medians and that's where they meet in the circle, P is the centroid. Isn't centroid kind of a cool word? Centroid. Um, sounds like sounds like a, a transformer. Centroid. Centroid alpha. Or something. All right. So we figured out that P is a centroid. Before we before we even get uh, our question asked, we figure that part out. So let's label the points S, L, R, M, T, and N. And this question says that S P is 16. And we say SM equals question mark. We want to find length of SM. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to highlight these segments. There's SP. And here is SM. Well, we know, we know that SP is how much of the distance all the way across the triangle? Two thirds. So I'm just going to write it that way. SP is equals, is is the same as equals in math language, two thirds of SM. Well, SP is 16, so let's substitute that in for SP. 16 equals two thirds SM. I want to get SM by itself. That could be that could be like X. How are we going to get rid of this two thirds from in front of SM? Let's do it in pieces. How are we going to get that three out of the denominator? Multiply, Multiply both sides by three. So these cancel. Sixteen times three is forty-eight, and that equals two times. SM. Now how to get rid of that 2? Divide by 2. And that tells me that SM equals 24. So the whole distance across 24. All right, let's think a little more about this question. Before, before going, did anybody have questions about what we did to solve the problem? 16, they gave it to us. The problem said that that equals 16, find out. All right, if, if, it's two th if this is 2 thirds of the distance across, how, how far across is this little segment? One third, right? Two, if we have to go all the way across, so if we're 2 thirds of the way across, we have to do another one third to get the rest of the way across. Yes. For the centroid, it is always 2 thirds. Yep, always 2 thirds. So if the question had asked us to find PM, How long is PM going to be? One third of the distance all the way across. And what did we decide the distance all the way across was? 24. 24, one third of 24, how do we find one third of 24? Divide by three. One third is the same as dividing by three, equals eight. There's one third, two thirds is 16. 16, eight plus eight is 16, so two, thirds is 16, and 3 thirds, 3 times 8, is 24. Yes? Yep, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we could, you could do it, you could do it either way, either, either order. All right, questions on that example? So that's what we mean by two-thirds of the way across. This distance is two-thirds of the entire length across the triangle. All right. The next thing we need to talk about is the altitude. Or the other way you'll hear this talked about is the height. The altitude is 
the perpendicular from goes from a vertex perpendicular to the other side. So let's draw, let's draw a couple of pictures of altitudes. Altitudes can happen in three different ways. So if we have an acute triangle, draw my altitudes in red. So it goes from the vertex perpendicular to the other side. All right, so if I looked at this picture, how would I know that that is not the perpendicular bisector of that doesn't side? Have doesn't have the two congruent marks, so it doesn't bisect this side of the triangle. So that tells us it's not the perpendicular bisector. Let me draw one more picture because I'll put the label on both here. If we have a right triangle, right triangles are convenient because there's a 90 degree angle. So which segment goes from the vertex to the opposite side of the triangle here? One of the sides of the triangle. So that's an altitude. And that is an altitude. So on a right triangle, one of the sides of the triangle can be an altitude. And if we have an obtuse triangle, this is where we have to be a little bit careful. The altitude can be outside the triangle. So what we have to do is extend one of the sides. So on this triangle, this is the altitude. So on an obtuse triangle, the, tri the altitude can be outside. All right, so on this next one, what I want to do, I'm going to draw a picture, and I'm going to ask about three different segments. And I want everybody, I want everybody to come up with an answer. Uh, the segments that I list, and I'll list them in just a second. Are they an altitude, a median, or neither? So here's my triangle. Uh, B, A, D. And I'm going to draw some segments here. So there's triangle BAD. I want to know about uh, segment AC, segment AD, and segment AE. Altitude, altitude, median, or neither for each of those segments. So everybody come up with an answer for those. Everybody come up with an answer for those three, which AC is an altitude, a median, or neither. So write down on your on your notes what you think. AD, altitude, median, or neither, and AE, altitude, median, or neither. Anybody have answers?
All right, so AC. This segment here, what is that? Altitude median or neither? Median. That's a median. It goes from the center of one side to the opposite vertex. So that's a median. How about AD? Neither. neither. What is AD? What is it? Just a side of the triangle, right? And it's not a right triangle, so it can't be an altitude. How about AE? Altitude. altitude. Very nice. Altitude. <coughs> because it goes perpendicular to the opposite side, we have to extend that opposite side. It goes perpendicular to that opposite side. So that's an altitude. So with, all, with these points of concurrency, because we've talked about so many of them, it's important to keep, keep all these different things straight. All right. So as you might guess, as you might guess, the altitudes are also concurrent. So let's talk about that last point of concurrency. The altitudes of a triangle are concurrent at a point called the orthocenter. And there's nothing really special about the distances with the orthocenter. What is, what's special about the orthocenter is it's where all the altitudes meet. So let's draw a picture of what the, how we would look, how, what, what the orthocenter, if we drew the orthocenter of a triangle would look like. So our orthocenter is where our altitudes meet. So we're going to go from one side at a 90 degree angle to the opposite side. I'll do each one in a different color. Finally, my green one here. And point P is the orthocenter. And we know these are altitudes, not perpendicular bisectors because they don't bisect the opposite sides. Anybody have an idea of what kind of triangle, in what kind of triangle would the altitudes and the perpendicular bisectors be the same? Uh, the, that they would be the same for one side, so equilateral triangle. For an equilateral triangle, the altitudes and the perpendicular bisectors are the same. And that turns out kind of good. So there's nothing special, nothing really special about any distances with the orthocenter. It's just where all the altitudes are. The orthocenter can be inside the triangle. So that's the picture we just drew. So we draw. Uh, just a scalene triangle. I'm going to do a quick so that looks like the one we just drew. So for a scalene triangle, for an acute triangle, It's going to be inside. It can be on a right triangle. And for this one, where, where, do, where do two of the altitudes meet? Where can we see two of the altitudes meeting here? From the vertex, perpendicular to the opposite side. From the vertex, perpendicular to the opposite side. 
until they meet right there. And if I draw the perpendicular there, it goes right to that side. So it can be on a right triangle, and it can be outside an obtuse triangle. And with the obtuse triangle, what we have to do is extend our sides here. I'm going to extend this one. I'm going to extend this one. And I'll do those in red, my altitudes. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. I wanted to undo that. There we go. And I also have to extend my altitudes to get them to intersect the way I want them to. Uh, and then I'm going to go perpendicular to the opposite side there. So I have to extend that one, so I'm perpendicular there. And then this one I have to kind of go backwards. Like so. And there's my ortho center outside an obtuse triangle. So the circumcenter can be inside, on, or outside. The in center is always inside. Centroid is always inside. The ortho center can be inside, on, or outside. All right, questions there? Okay, let's summarize now. Let's summarize our four points of concurrency. So our angle bisectors. Our angle bisectors, so what we talked about on our opener, give us the in-center. And it can be, it can be helpful. And I'm just going to draw a quick sketch of our, what our in-center looks like. In-center we have angle bisectors. One, one teacher told me she uh, always remembers this by thinking, always be intelligent. Angle bisector in center. This, the other one that we talked about on Friday was the perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular bisectors give us the orthocenter. Or sorry, not the orthocenter, the circumcenter. And the teachers tell me they think that they remember peanut butter crunch. I I never had a good I never had good luck with mnemonics like that doesn't help me to remember this. But some people it does. Perpendicular, that's a wrong drawing for a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector, 90 degrees, and cuts those in half. down a little bit. And there's my circumcenter. And then today we have the centroid. Centroid is the medians. And I'll do it the other way around. Median centroid.
So another drawing of what our centroid looks like. Medians go from the vertex to the middle of the opposite side. I don't have a nice one for this one, NC. Think of whatever you want for that one. And then finally, uh, altitude and the orthocenter. And one teacher said one of her students came up with uh, alternative orchestra to remember this one. It's kind of a strange, strange way to remember it, but whatever works for you. Let me draw a better triangle. There. And those are the altitudes. From perpendicular from one side to the opposite side. So those are the four points of concurrency that we talked about. Alright, questions? Uh, so, 8 through 32 even on page 312 and the 5.4 dynamic activity.